Welcome everybody to the latest episode of Down to the Beat. It's me, John, sitting on the other side of the room, so you know that means we got another special guest on the other side. Please welcome everybody. What's up? Tiger Jacunte. Jacunte Tiger for the Intimates. We here. Thank you for the invite. Hey bro, thank you. I'm glad how quickly we set it up. I know, right? Bing, I bang, know, boom. right? Yo, practical bro, just... <laughs> no, we <we're> here. <laughs> I love it. Anyone else there? Just our comments and DMs. You can just slide right in there, and yeah, bro. we'll respond. Respectfully, we're not guys. that like we don't have that big a head yet. We're not that big. <laughs> <laughs> um. Well, welcome, man. Thank you. Hey, no, for real. Uh, it was dope. It was dope for the invite. Um, and the setup is clean too, bro. Honestly, thanks, bro. bro. Yo, like it looks better in real life. Like, <laughs> no, no, dead ass, dead ass, bro. Like. I thought it was sick on camera, but like now it's like, damn, nice. it's actually a nice ass setup. You heard that, folks. You heard it right. <laughs> um, back in the city, eh? Yeah, bro. Um, I was here for the weekend. You know, I just come back every now and then see see my dad, see the homies that I haven't seen in years, and uh, yeah, bro. Do you ever? Did you make some music this time you were back in town? Yeah, uh, I was actually at Shandy's yesterday, bro. Um, me, uh, Kaz. Idea, we all uh linked up, did a little little music here and there, a little you know? surf reunion, yeah, bro. It had been a minute, it had been a minute, yeah, yeah. Like, all of us, like the the, the OGs, the founders, <laughs> the founding fathers, <laughs> the, the founding fathers, the Mount Rushmore of surf, bro. How did that feel to be back in the same room? Because he was saying last time he was here, it's been a minute, yeah, yeah. I mean, um, it's like I don't know how to say, like. It, it felt we, we we all grew up now like we all know each other and everything but you get that same feeling that like when we're all, all like high schoolers and shit you know because like one of the last time when we we're all all together it was like ideas crib um like easily three four years ago really yeah 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 like it's i st- three or four years since your team has been all together all together yeah um that's the thing we all tap in like individually or like i mean uh every now and then uh shandy and uh cameron they'll just like come through uh in montreal or like me I- i'd come through and it would it would mostly be like the three of us sometime adrian as well uh d lad but like you know the the four like main like who started this bro like it had been a minute it had been a minute and if you guys don't know what we're talking about we're talking obviously about the surf collective your team here from ottawa how long you guys been at it for Man, it's been what? Uh, we're twenty twenty one, twenty twenty two lately. Uh, I'd say seven years, bro. Seven years. Yeah, bro. What? Yeah, bro. Yeah, honestly, like, okay, if I take it from like the first, yes. the first interaction that I had with Carl, like regarding and rapping, was late twenty fourteen, December twenty fourteen, actually. So around this time of the year, seven years ago. Hmm. Yeah. And what was that first interaction like? Bro, man, sliding my DMs. It was like, hey, oh, bro, you got a minute? <laughs> it was like, cause like I, I had known Carl for years, like, cause uh, our, our our families um, were close, mm-hmm. and so uh, you know he's he's a Cameroonian as well, so like we're we're all in the same community. But he was just like, like we wouldn't talk that much, but he was telling my bro, and like he just hit me up. I was like, yo, man, you got a minute? I was like, yeah, man. He's like, yo, bro, like look at this little Ti remix that I did. Yo, listen to that shit. Let me know. And as I said, bro, I listened to that. I was just. I was just amazed, man. It was garbage, but it was fire garbage, you know? <laughs> I was like, <laughs> Flaming hot dumpster fire. Exactly, yeah. bro. And then, yeah, uh, it just it just went on from there. And um, we've been just making this, all our music ever since. So that was seven years ago that he in your DMs was like, yo, check out my TI remix. Yeah, yeah. And then shortly thereafter, you're connected with Chandy. Yes, sir. And then shortly thereafter that, you're connected with who was the next piece of the puzzle? Uh, it was Cameron. Kaz McMine. Cameron Ma- Ma- Kaz McMine. 
What's Carl's name again for the people who don't know? Kaidea. Kaidea, right? Yes, and that's sir. one who still runs strong with you? Yeah, bro. That's my bro for life. Actually, before I, I pulled up here, I was actually playing FIFA with him <laughs> and I whooped his ass because this <laughs> motherfucker trash. <laughs> and then before that, playing Smash Brothers, I whooped his ass too. <laughs> Can't play with me like that. But, um,. Nah, yeah, uh, Kaz got in, and then um, my homie uh, Savo joined, and then afterwards, Adrian, d uh, more recently, like mm. two or three years ago, I think. And that fit the whole, that's the outfit right there. That's the whole, yeah, that's the whole roster, yeah. So, with a team like that, you know, you got, what, what you run with six people? Yes, sir. Five, six people? Yes, sir. I didn't really count that. Uh, <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> I didn't count myself, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so is there a lot of competition that drives those, drives you guys? Oh, yeah, for sure, bro. Like, I just heard you talking about video games. Does it translate into music as well? Yeah, bro, dude. Like, I mean, it's not even that we're cussing on each other. Like, it's not even that, like, yo, yo, bro, my remix is better than yours, bro. Like, it's not even about that. Mm -mm. It's mentally there, like, naturally, man. I mean, I know that's for, that's the case for me. But, I mean, I know as well for, for Shandy, for, for Kaidea. Like, I feel like in a group like this, if there wasn't any competition, it'd be pointless, mm -hmm. you know? And it's like, it's really that energy that I that I drive off myself. Like, yo, I go to the studio with these guys like once every uh, every few months, every uh, like year or some. And it's like, okay, like what you got? And then they show me some joints they've been working on. And then every time, every time, I'm always like, yo, you know what? I'm gonna get back in my car, drive back to Montreal, and fucking grind on my shit. You know what I mean? Because like, yo. Every time I see them, they step up. And then me too as well. Like, I need to step up. And it's like, if it wasn't like that, it'd be obsolete, you know? Yeah. So, so yeah, definitely there's that competition aspect to it. And it's like, that's what I love about this group, honestly. Have you ever, you ever heard that story about, like, when Kanye and when Tyler Creator was making the song Sm Smuckers with, yeah. with Tyler Creator, or with uh, Lil Wayne and Kanye West? Yeah. And then him and... Lil Wayne spit their verses and then gave it to Kanye and Kanye yeah. was like, fuck, I gotta go change yeah, my yeah, whole shit. Yeah. Does that sort of thing ever happen to y'all? Uh, yeah, like yeah, when yeah. you guys are like featuring on each other's, like you get you get that Chandy, Chandy feature, you're yeah. like, fuck, I'm gonna have to go change this verse. Honestly, yeah. Honestly, yeah. Like, um, uh, I mean, often it's more like, you know, uh, someone pulls out a beat, either that like me or Shandy or like some somebody else made or whatever. And it's like, okay, I'm going to hop on this. Kaidi is going to hop on this. It's like, okay, like the first person that gets on the mic and it's like, oh shit, that's not how I, I thought I was supposed to go on there. And it's like, all right, let me rewrite my shit. And it's like, oh damn, this man got, got, got like went harder than I thought. All right, let me go rewrite my stuff. You know, it's, it's, it's just like, it's that energy though. Like, um, it's funny though that you mentioned that song. I, I read not too long ago, Jay-Z was supposed to be on it. Really? I'm not even playing with you. Like apparently like, Tyler and Jay Z, they they like they're they're not like close close, but in the sense that like he talks way like he talks to Jay Z more often than we think, and he was supposed to be on Smuckers, but mm. Kanye got to it first. Would have been sick to have like all of them though. Lil that Wayne, crazy. Jay Z. That would have put it in like kind of those that that like sort of like the super rap song, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like the one train, yeah. The forever, Yo, that's the, the one I was gonna say. You know what yes, I mean? Sir, yes, click, sir. Fucking yes, sir. Yes, sir. Fucking mercy. You know yeah. those. Yeah. Those ones where there's no bad, like, mm. they're all just juggernauts of the game on a fucking track. And you know what's crazy? Like, Tyler at the time, like, he was big, but he mm. wasn't, like, you know. That's when he was just starting. Yeah, he was just starting to get, like, that buzz, you know, that A-list a a celebrity buzz. And it's, like, the fact that Kanye and Lil Wayne just went, like, yeah, we give you a verse. Yeah. And then Kanye even, like, had to rewrite because he cared about this shit. Mm. Crazy. That was a, yeah, that, that album was sick. Fucking Cherry Bomb is definitely, I think, what pushed Tyler the Creator into like the realm that he is now. For sure, I think I, I think yeah, he, I think that album deserves more credit for his like evolution than perhaps Scumfuck Flower Boy does. Yeah, no. Nah, like real. I think we hear more of Scumfuck and like his in, in in more of his music now, but I think that Cherry Bomb definitely is what kind of forced him into that realm. Yeah, definitely. Um, tell me a little bit about the difference between Montreal and the Ottawa rap scene. Yeah, bro. Um, so. Montreal, honestly, it's like intersection of so many different elements. Europeans, Americans, the local scene. Um, you got people making noise all sorts of different ways. Um, not necessarily just hip-hop as well. Um, it's also like, 
you know, the fact that we're a big city, like one of the biggest in the country, like I feel like there, there's this energy of like, yo, we have to put ourselves on the map. We have to like tap in and like, yo, we have to, we have to have our own Drake. We have to, you know, like, and me personally, I don't think that it's necessarily like the energy to have, but still like I get the feeling and it's, it's just like, um, a lot of people are just rushing to, to put their names out there and, um, a lot of creativity, a lot of talent. I just feel like sometimes not the right names or the right the right acts are, are put on the forefront when it comes to like representing the city. Who like who is representing the city right now? Um so if if I go off top, um there's like the obvious bigger names like uh Zach Zoya. Um Zach Zoya, I think he's signed with like Universal Canada or something. But like anyways, that's that's probably like one of the biggest acts um English wise. Um, very recently, and if you haven't heard, I would strongly suggest to tap in. There's this kid, uh, Skyfall, and, um, you know, we were talking about, uh, of course, the the passing of Virgil earlier today, but, like... Yes, rest you know, in peace, Virgil. Yeah, this is a peace. pre-recorded, just yeah. so everyone knows, today Virgil Abloh died a very... Like, that's fucking tragic, man. Yeah, for real. Rest in peace to Virgil. Rest in peace to Virgil Abloh. Um, but, yeah, so the kid, Skyfall... Uh, got a kind of like a cosign, if you want, from Virgil. A little so, young story post, or uh, not even like he legit used one of his unreleased for uh, Louis Vuitton ex NBA ad. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. Like Lu- Louis Louis Vuitton posted the ad on their IG page, IG page, and the beat was playing and everything. And that's a guy. That's a guy from Montreal. That's dope. Yeah, and uh, he's been performing in the UK because his uh, his style is more like. Uh, um uk like i'd say slash like dance hall a little bit mm-hmm. you know um because he's he's originally from st vincent island mm-hmm. so it's more like uh caribbean uh influences in terms of sound but he's he's going places k is from montreal isn't he yes sir well not exactly montreal montreal but the greater montreal area yeah yeah he's from a city called long which is south shore so hmm. yeah damn so there are some like there's some big big names coming from montreal right now but in the the like kind of uh world that you're living in in the music mm-hmm. landscape there do you find that people are trying too hard you know are they forcing their image yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 but to be fair bro like there's uh try hards everywhere uh, also just to go back slowly to your, your uh previous question uh i can't forget to mention high classified dope ass producer um, he's also from the greater Montreal Laval actually, but this guy, uh, uh, made beats for uh, future the weekend. Um, I think he made like a bunch of big artists actually, mm-hmm. but yeah, I had to mention this guy, but back to the question. Um, yes, a lot of tryhards as there is everywhere, honestly, but, um, it's, it's, it's kind of coming back to what I was saying. Like, yo, there's so many, like, there's this urge of just like trying to put Montreal on the map and towards that motion it's kind of like a lot of people that are trying to like oh shit like yo Montreal is all that yo lo, lo, like we got we got gang bangers here too yo 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 we got we got creative niggas too like oh shit like it's like yo we know there's that but like you can you can prove establish that point by just doing it not why do you why do you think it's like that cuz yo honestly i feel like it's part of it's all part of the the drake effect yeah yeah bro like Drake, Drake, bro. Like, honestly, goat of this generation. No matter what we we say, like the numbers are there, like the influence is there, like you know nothing else to say. But yeah, the fact that um, uh, a guy from a Canadian city, um, literally like establish like his foot on the industry, like you know it's it's forever imprinted in cement. Like, it's like I. Right, Toronto did it. How can we do it? And it's it's just like, yo, for sure. I think all Canadian. Sorry, I don't mean to cut you off, but I feel like that happens no, in, cool, man. in all Canadian co- or cities right oh, now. Oh yeah, right? for sure, for sure, for sure, for sure. Um, nah, it it is for sure um, a reality. Um, I feel though, like yo, in Montreal, the 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 sentiment is more urgent in the sense that like, you know, when you think about like three big cities in the country, obviously it's like Toronto, Vancouver, Montreal. Yeah. Top, you know? And it's like Montreal is always like second or like third or whatever, but like it, it's like the always we're in the top three and it's like, okay, 
yo, we got a we got a sports team here. Uh, the concerts, people come here. We got the festivals. Uh, we got so many artists. Uh, we're like three, four million, and it's like, I, right, uh, yo, we can definitely do it. We can do this shit, and it's like, I, right, how do we do it? And everybody has who's like their gonna own. Do it, you know yeah, who's I mean? gonna do it? Like, mm -hmm. and it, it, everybody has their own versions. Like, everybody has their own thought about it or whatever. Me personally, like, I don't think that we need another Drake, like an equivalent of Drake, to establish ourselves. I feel like we should just embrace the fact that we have a diversity like no other. That makes it sound kind of phony. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it sounds corny and a little bit fake there. Nah, I wouldn't say that, man. I wouldn't say that. Um, it's not like if you're if you're aspiring to be someone else and like if that's something mm -hmm. you kind of feel is going on, you know what I mean? Like if yeah. people are really trying to push for the like if they're really trying to like kind of become the next big thing out of Canada, if that's sort of what you're feeling is driving the industry right there, mm -hmm. doesn't that ever like that must come across as a little forced or phony? Yeah, no, nah, it is a little bit. But at the same time, it's not like I don't think it. I don't I don't agree that it's not the direction, but at the same time, like uh, and I'm sorry, I, I, I don't think it's the right direction to go. But at the same time. I don't I I understand why the sentiment is there. It's kind of the same way as like yo um you know you're imagine like you're you're a prospect basketball player in your city and you're like oh yeah I'm trying to be like the next LeBron. It's not it's that feeling. Yeah, you're trying okay. to be on top. You I know see what, what I mean? you're saying. And it's like you're not finding that the game is emulating yeah. or like the 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 sound is emulating Drake's or the week. No, no, no. Like, like you're not a, there's an original yeah, sound. There's it's a, just the, that the yeah. kind of mentality seems yeah. bitey. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and it's it's like I, I feel also that instead of finding finding like our chosen one who's gonna like guide everyone, we should just like embrace the fact that like we have so much talent and just like help each other a bit more. And if a lot of like Montreal artists are watching this, like I know that a lot of them are actually gonna understand what I'm saying. And it's like, yo, it, there's this separation, little clicks every now and then, every 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 here and there, and it's like, you know, it makes it hard for everyone. <laughs> Well, that's the one thing about Ottawa right now I find is, is and everyone thinks it is as well, is mm. that everyone has become very able to work with each other. It's become a very cohesive community. Yeah. And and you see a lot of the same people at shows, right? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's a lot of the same people supporting the same people. Yeah. You know, and bigger fa fan bases are growing because we've mm. been going to these events for the past year and a half and they're becoming bigger and bigger, right? That's what's up. But it's really nice just to see the amount of inclusivity of of each other and the the amount of like just trying to force everyone up to the same level just bigging mm. up everyone who they can mm. it's a really beautiful scene do you feel it's the same way in montreal or is it a little bit more separated um it's a little more more separated but it's like when you when you under understand like how the city is like laid out and works and everything you kind of understand why it's like that, but at the same time, it's like. What do you mean by that? Like, just try to put well, that into as few sentences. As well, possible. okay, for 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 a fact, bro. Like, you know, there's the the east side is more francophone. The mm -hmm. west side of the city is is way more anglophone. Mm -hmm. So it's like right off top, there's this this kind of separation culturally. Um, of course, it blends, and nobody actually cares that much about it. But you can see the clear difference. Um, and then on top of that, you know, each neighborhood has their different vibes and it's like, uh, it also goes by community. So like, you know, you got the Haitians supporting a lot of like their artists as well. And I mean, they also support other artists, but like, you know, and then there's also, um, you know, more of the, the actual like, uh, Quebec artists that support their own stuff. And it's like, when you're, when you, you, you ask, for example, um, Okay, name me some artists like uh, in Quebec that represent uh, represent uh, Quebec rap, like in French and everything. And it's it's really hard to to figure out like whether or not we're gonna talk about artists from certain area mm -hmm. or another. And it's like you know when it could be all of them. Yeah. So it's like you know it's it's a bit more intricate than that, but yeah, it's uh it's around that honestly. That's crazy. Yeah. So do you ever feel like it's cutthroat there? Nah, nah, not really, cause like, like it's not a really kill or be killed. Attitude. Nah, nah, not even, not even. Like, there's no one out there who does uh, a lot of like cheap shots or whatever. Um, it's more like uh, 
I wouldn't say like the secrecy or whatever, but it's more of um people acting like they're they're uh, they're bigger than what they are actually. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like oh yeah, I'm not gonna work with this guy because oh shit. And I was like oh yeah, this guy doesn't have a lot of followers or whatever. Oh shit, this guy like, you know, it's you're like, pigeonholing yourself at that point. What'd you say? You're like you're just kind of getting yourself in a hole there, and then you're gonna be yeah. standing there by yourself. Yeah, but it's it's a. It's a, also a, a question, like, I feel like a, a lack of information or knowledge in general. Because, like, bro, a lot of people think that, you know, your influence as an artist today is based off of the amount of followers that you have and the amount of monthly listeners. But all of that are numbers, in the majority of cases, uh, geared up by either bots or either systems or programs or whatever. And it's like, there is a reason why those numbers are those numbers. You know what I mean? Of course, there is some lucky shots that, are, that go viral or whatever. But there's a reason behind everything. I've I've had like I've did the the error, for example, of organizing events. I would invite artists based off of their follower counts, and then next thing you know, like there's like ten people showing up in in the crowd of like hundred, two hundred and shit. You know what I mean? And it's like, damn, you're like, oh, but I thought this guy had like ten k monthly listeners. Oh, I thought this guy had, like you know, it's like you can't base it, it off that. Yeah, exactly. And there's a lot of that mentality because they don't they don't know, like if you if you uh, compare it to a scene or well, an, an easy an e easy example like New York, New York, you can understand that like the influence even to this day is really based of like the 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 reception that you have in your your area, your neighborhood, the community that you're in, and the people that actually support you. And it's like you can have ten thousand followers, twenty thousand followers, or whatever, but if people in the streets don't actually rock with you. Your shows, they ain't, they ain't gonna mean anything, and that's like that's that's what like a lot of artists in Montreal don't understand. And I mean, not even just Montreal, like just in general, it's not it's not just about numbers. It's really like the influence that you have, like core to core. How so, do you uh, how do you act on that? Um, honestly, bro, like <laughs> I'd say in the in the past like two three years, like me and the the surf people, like we've give we've given each other like a lot of headaches, try to figure out like the algorithms and everything. But very recently, bro, like. I'm more in the uh, in a creative mindset in the sense that like I focus I, I focus way more on like what I create rather than like how I expose it to the world. Mm -hmm. It's like oh shit I need to drop it at this time I gotta drop it at like you know towards this like you know like that that just gives me a headache. So um I'm more focused about like what I do and also I just try to have fun, bro. Like as corny as it sounds, bro. Like I did a show in the back of a U-Haul this summer, bro, and shit was bangers, bro. Like freaking like 80 people showed up. We were like in a little park. And uh, at the time, like Quebec didn't even allow shows and shit, but like we still we still made that shit made shit uh, happen, and, and it was just like it was just fun, bro. Like I was just having having the best time of my life, creating for the sake of creating. Yeah, bro. Honestly. Mm -hmm. So you you said you're like in a place now where you're just creating, really just trying to get yeah. your stuff out there, right? Yeah, bro. But did you move at one point with like the idea of blowing up? Like in your mind, like is that the was that the driving force behind your behind your creativity at one point? Oh yeah, for sure. At one point, it gets to you. Um, you know, when I started doing music originally, it was it was more of a challenge. Like it was more like, oh yeah, I bet I can learn how to make beats. Oh yeah, I bet I can learn how to freestyle. I bet I can learn how to rap and everything and everything. And then when the songs started to be more coherent, coherent, and then like, you listen to it and then you drop them. And then you move to a bigger area, more people tap in, you do a little shows here and there. And then you're like, okay, like every release you start, you start to think like outside of the, outside of just like the, the artist perspective of like the, the creating process. Now you think about, oh shit, like, uh, what if like this song goes viral? Oh, maybe I should use these drum patterns and those beats instead. Cause like, it's going to pop off a bit more. And it's like, eventually man like as i said you get a whole lot of headaches from this shit bro you get a whole lot of headaches and it's like i don't know for me personally i'm you know it, it just it just gets me tired so have you left all that behind at least for the time being for the time being like i mean left it all behind of course like sometimes like i i, I still work on a beat and i'm like oh yeah if i do this it's gonna be a bit more poppy it's gonna be a bit but like Right now, bro, like you're not playing to the algorithm. Not really, man. And the way the way rap goes nowadays, bro, like I'm just I'm just like, yo, let me just do me and that's it. Just keep sharpening your sword. For real. 
Mm-hmm. For real. Honestly. And then when you have the sharpest sword in the world, you'll be able to cut through anything. There you go. That's what's up. And um, That can mean whatever you want it to mean, folks. <laughs> hey, <laughs> I yo. said it and I was like, you were like, hey. you were like, yeah. And I was like, thank God that hit because I have no idea what the fuck. I, I, the <laughs> nah, sharpening sense, your though. sword thing made sense. The Bro, cut part. I, ha- I had some anime reference in my head when you said that. And I was like, that's true, though. Mm-hmm. That's true. Though. <laughs> you know? Um, so you're only you're you're still young you're still making you're already pa- tired of like thinking of making music for the algorithm mm-hmm. how is it that you like stay kind of young in your mind i mean i don't think it's a question of like being young or whatever it's just a question of like staying creative and it's like um creativity it's a thing i feel that you know it, it can follow any direction, you know? You just need to make sure that it's the right one. And the algorithm, in my opinion, can lead you to some places that can look attracting, can look, you know, like you. that's what you need, that's what you want, but not necessarily. Like, what what got me to that point, bro? Um, of course, you've heard about the Travis incident. And it's mm-hmm. like, without getting into the a debate, whether or not he was guilty or whatever, when I saw that shit, do you think he was? <laughs> I'll get back to you about it. But yo, when I when I saw when I saw that shit, bro, like to me it was just like, yo, how you go from a point where like these kids treat you like a god, you know, man, they buy McDonald's for your name, bro. They play Fortnite for your name. They buy tickets to your shows, they, they jump fences, and then like average ass Nike's with backwards check marks on it for astronomical amounts of money for like a whole year worth of rent bro mm-hmm. and it's like soon as one thing happened and i mean one thing like it is a big incident but like one thing happened it's like bro you're you're like shit this guy this guy should die yo send this guy to hell yo this guy's gonna get sued yo take all his money put him in jail defund travis scott i'm saying bro and it's like I see this and I'm like, do I really want to be put in this type of position off of what I do? Off of the music that I make, the beats that I do, the mixes, the 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 like do I do I want to be put in that position one day? And it's like, if I'm ever to be big with my music, I want to like I want to make it clear that like, yo, I'm an artist, I'm a creator, but I'm not a fucking celebrity. You know what I'm saying? Like so being a celebrity, it's like it's another thing. You know, it's it's I like always, yeah. There's I'd love to be like famous enough that like, you know, when I go outside, people are like, "Oh my god, that's John Balser." You know what yeah. I mean? But like, I don't want people to like fucking faint when they see me. Yo, like I'm I don't. Saying. I couldn't be Michael Jackson big. You know. Yeah. But like, I could probably manage like a good like. Mm-hmm. Like I don't know. Like I feel like I like I feel like I'd be like a good like. Fuck, I don't even know, man. There's manageable amounts of fame, though. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But, like, like I feel like, you know, the guys are Griselda. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I feel like those like those dudes are local legends, right? Mm-hmm. Like, in Buffalo, New York, those guys are fucking legends. Mm-hmm. They have whole communities and city behind them. Mm-hmm. Really strong fan base that they have built very naturally. Mm-hmm. They're underground still. Like, they're considered underground rappers. Yep. But even the mainstream legends actually fuck with them. But that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. fucking uh, Benny the Butcher just signed a Def Jam. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like, you know, like it's and they're fo- like they're thir- late thirties. Like mm-hmm. those are old old dudes. And w- w- in cons- like in relation to like the guys running the game right now, but these guys are now just popping off. I feel like more yeah. than we perhaps would have thought. Yeah. But I think like that's a very. Um, dope spot to be it's to be famous but like yeah. not too famous i'm saying like honestly if i if i am to be famous off of this shit i want it i want it you know just to be because of the music and only the music mm-hmm. not because like i don't know i did some fucking tiktok not because uh <laughs> oh shit i went to some award show and i did something that went crazy and now, and now it's like heavy headlines you know what i mean like i see like all of these niggas and it's like Yo, you can pinpoint when they got famous. And for what what for? For for what for, you know? And it's it's like 
it's cool like it's funny you know it's like oh shit Lil Uzi did this thing oh shit Travis Scott did this shit yeah like, Lil Uzi girl put a 24 million yeah. diamond in his face I'm saying bro but like yo shout out to Lil Uzi still like that's the homie but like still like yo but like um, just go listen to P's and Q's you know I'm what I mean? saying yeah for real, <laughs> you know for real. Like, you'll know what the fuck Lil Uzi, Lil Uzi was on like yeah, exactly <laughs> that's what I mean and I'm just like I'm I'm just like yeah I, I don't want to be in a position where um yeah people faint when they see me or it's like I'm known or respected for something mm. that his, isn't related to my art. Like, I remember Freddie Gibbs was saying, like, he's from Indiana, I think. Yeah. Freddie Gibbs. Like, another perfect example of that. You know what I mean? Famous, but not too famous. Yeah. Like, super appreciated for his work. Yeah. Entertaining dude. Mm -hmm. But, like, you're not going to faint if you ever see him. But he was telling a story about how, like, Michael Jackson came... He was working at KFC, I think, and Michael Jackson pulled through his KFC. Oh, that's funny. And bought a ton of chicken and then was like throwing chicken out of his McD out of his limo, was like throwing it to people in a crowd. And just had like he just Michael he said like Freddie Gibbs was saying that he likes seeing grown ass men like faint at the sight of Michael Jackson. Yeah, bro. Yeah, bro. I don't even know what to say about that. Right? That's like, isn't that fun. crazy? That's like, could you fun, imagine, bro. like, you were just, like, walking down the street with your father? And yeah. And he just was like, oh, my God, Michael Jackson, and his knees gave out right there. He's like, Dad, you bitch. <sighs> nah, <laughs> for real, bro. It's, it's like, like, bro, if anything, I want to be an inspiration to other artists, other people who want to do the same shit that I do in the future mm -hmm. or whatever. And it's like... Yo, I love the saying like your favorite rapper's favorite rapper. Yeah, like, bro. Your favorite comedian. Yeah, favorite bro. Comedian. You know, what honest. I mean? Like that's honest. I think that's a beautiful sentiment. Honest. I just saw a video Rick Ross took of like a woman in the crowd trying to propose to him on stage. Like that would make me so uncomfortable. Bro, I don't even understand the point of those people doing this shit. Bro, it's like it's like come on, man. Yeah, like, Rick Ross is gonna end his whole show. It's like, oh. elope with you to Vegas. <laughs> Leave whatever he has going on <laughs> for you, who bro, spent bro. fucking $400 on front row tickets to fucking Rick Ross. Idiot. Bro, people do crazy shit, man. And I'm just like, oh, bro, come on, man. <laughs> you wasted so much money for that. My girlfriend said one time, she's like, you know, celebrities kind of freak me out. I was like, why? She's like, they're just regular people. And they I was are. like, Fa like what facts why do i even care that much yeah no for like real. this whole pete davidson fucking kim kardashian shit when uh, the whole I internet's know. going crazy i'm like who wh why I the know. fuck do we care i know but that's the thing people care because it's such a like a match that wasn't supposed to happen like i get it, why people yeah. care like i do yeah. it's the kardashians yeah. whatever but like come on I know, I know. It's nuts. It's <laughs> dumb, bro. Come it's on. it's dumb. That's mega famous. Those people fucking freak me out. The Kardashians are crazy. Nah, yeah. Like, nah, what bro. the fuck is that? Bro, you know what made me laugh? I mean, not even make, makes made me laugh, bro. Like, literally, like, freaked me out. I don't know if you saw this video a long time ago. When Kanye was with Kim, he went to Armenia. He did a surprise show. And it's like, it's like this like a uh, city city place or whatever this the downtown of some armenian place and he's like there's a bridge he's performing and then there's like people circling him bro they had like the armenian army army like as security because people were going too crazy and then at the end of the show my guy kanye goes in the water like under the bridge like he just goes in the water just starts walking over there and then people run in the water just to touch this guy like it's the comeback of jesus and i'm just like i'm there and i'm like bro i'm like bro. I'm like, bro. I'm like since when armenia fucks with niggas so much bro i was like i was like, I was like yo That's the question. i was like yo how did that happen how the, did that happen? how the fuck did that happen i was like god damn this is nuts like yeah i guess it's kanye bro i guess it's kanye Kanye man. just blowing up in armenia no for real like bro <laughs> you, yo look it up on youtube bro. Like, just look have to now. just look up like kanye performing in, in armenia and then, like you know he does a song like he does the good life he does stronger or whatever and then he goes in the water and he just like stands there like this and then like people start running ah, kanye kanye and then they start oh, touching man, this so guy crazy. it's like when like people like when people like how Artists will stop crowd surfing because people just tear the fuck out of their clothes, rip their chains off, you yeah, know, like, yeah. get their shoes. Yeah. Fuck off. Nah, for real. Oh, bro, that would be so brutal. 
I just want to be the guy that people are like, hey, can I get a picture? I know. Yeah, that's it, bro. <laughs> honestly, I'll do man. I'll quietly here so people don't. You can do it outside so no one else kind of catches on to who you are. For real, for you're real, not bro. That, you're not that famous, you know? You know what, bro? I'd be happy being the celebrity, like the 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 like Kevin Hart would say, the 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 snapping fingers. The the yeah, you're you're um <laughs> you're um you're you're that guy. The you're the not, yeah, you're what's what, what's his name again? The the. Anyways, okay, it'll get back to me. You know, you're that guy. I'd be fine being with that, bro. You know, fucking be like, yo, 10 million in the bank, bro. And then people just snap fingers at you, bro. I'd be fine with that. Yeah. I'd be fine with that. You know what I mean? 50 bucks a picture, please. Yo, for real, bro. <laughs> bro. Like if there was just like one impersonator out there of me, you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh my God, bro. Um, Tell me a little bit about your sound. How it came to be. Yo, my sound, man. It's been a funny-ass route, bro. So, look. Of course, um, when I... Uh, I mean, I grew up in the French system. The Quebec system. So, like, my first language is, is French, of course. But uh, I've been I've been speaking English for um, pretty, pretty early. Like, my mom, she was working in Ottawa. She was like, yo, you want to go places in life? Better learn that English. So, um... What yeah. do you use more on a day-to-day -day basis? Uh... Honestly, with school lately, English. Mm. Even though, like, yeah, I talk to all my friends. Like, I mean, eighty percent of them, I talk to them in French. But because of school, because of like my my music and everything, talking to surf people, English. Mm. Um, but yeah, bro. So my main issue was, uh, well, of course, being on flow, learning how to rap, and my accent. So when I was rapping, I had a like a, a very, very, uh, very present french accent and it's like yo carl and chandy they were making fun of me they're like bro like look at this nigga bro like the way he fucking raps bro <laughs> <laughs> bro like the way he's like oh my god like i was just like all right okay whatever but it got better with time um i was noticing that at the beginning of our interview i think yeah yeah i was like waiting and then you like did a couple of french things i was like ah, ah yeah, gotcha. you go. yeah yeah gotcha depends the day bro like sometimes sometimes it's a bit more present sometimes like you know i manage but um yeah uh it was it was really about that and um in terms of sound like uh yeah main influences always have been um tyler kanye chance um a lot of uh, old school stuff like early 2000 like uh yo low brother not a lot of people know know, the, know this group they 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 have some joints with like uh ninth wonder kanye mm -hmm. nas bro like i'm huge on those guys ninth wonder sick yeah bro and um it's mostly been about that, bro. Like, uh, influenced by um, Montreal as well, a little bit too. What does that mean, bro? Um, you just made it seem like there's so much going on there. What yeah, is dude. Just influenced by Montreal, you can't just sum it up into one sentence. Like nah, that. look. Okay, so um, what I liked about about Montreal is that people are not scared to get out of the zone. Like, they're like as much as like, you know, there's a lot a lot of cloud chasing over there. Um, People are not scared to just, like, try shit. Mm -hmm. People are not scared to, like, just be like, yo, what would this sound? What would do? Like, yo, they just go at it and they, they try, trial and error, and, like, what works, works, right? And so, um, Montrealers, my friends that I've made there and other people that I've seen, they've really pushed me to express myself. And it's like, what Montreal uh, taught me is that um, there's no bad story. Like, there's no bad background story. Like, nobody gives a fuck where you're from in the sense that, like, nobody's going to make fun of you or judge you as long as it's true. You know what I mean? As long as it's true and as long as, like, you're not a, being a fucking dick about it, you know? <laughs> and it's like, it's like, yeah, um, of course, like, yeah, people were making fun of me a little bit, like, as a joke that I, I was, uh, I grew up in Gatineau, but, like, you know, because Gatineau is Gatineau, but anyways. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, nah, like, they were always pushing me to just like, yo, say my shit on the mic. And um, that shaped my sound a lot. And it's funny because like sometimes, bro, like Carly's always like, yo, it's like, yo, bro, this nigga going emotional on the mic, bro. Like, God damn. And it's like, yeah, bro. But like when you're true about what you what you fucking do, it's like that's what it should sound like. You uh, I was going to say your your sound or like your lyrics and your content is very um, mature. But I feel like your sound not immature, but just young sounding. You know what I mean? Like it's yeah, still in yeah. development you almost. Yeah, yeah, not for sure. Just because like, yo, um, 
I mean, my the foundation of my sound is mostly like my my uh, producing and beat making. Yeah, and it's like I've mostly been my myself at it for for so long, and so I'm still like discovering things every day, and I love it. Honestly, I love it. Um, but also like I like my joints a bit more colorful. Um, on the last project, though, it was a bit more toned down. A bit more melancholy, for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. That was more so talk my shit, though. Mm-hmm. Wasn't it? Uh, did you not find that? My Wait. answers are, aren't yours. Yeah. Sorry. My answers are never yours. Yeah, there you go. I found it was more to be uh, a little more matter-of-factly. Yeah, no, no, definitely, definitely. Um, I kind of toned it down because, like, I always love, like, the uh, the duality between, like, being um, having, like, a very col- uh, colorful sound but then like having some more like melancholic uh somber uh, uh subject matters in terms of music when in in the in the lyrics and everything and so um it's like i i wanted to tone it down but i still want to tap into that energy as well mm-hmm. you know yeah so. well cuz what i was going to say is try this at home first of all great cover work thanks bro love that art thanks. that was dope thanks um much more uplifting Mm-hmm. Um, like never too broke gave yeah. me like that kids Mac Miller vibe. Yeah, bro. Like yeah, bro. Thank you for saying that. Oh my god. Yeah, that's. Oh my god. Yeah, bro. that's what I got from that. I thought that was dope. Houston, we got it slash Sunday, the two part song. Mm-hmm. Great outro. Thanks, great man. outro. You was fun as fuck. I thought that was just a great, yeah. greatly like well made track. Thanks, but man. if we're talking about, um, um parlay advice mm-hmm. and process yeah i think i found those to be like the best songs on 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 uh yeah on um my answers are never yours yeah i found them to just be when you said cohesive earlier mm-hmm. i felt that yeah one bled into the other after the other yeah um what's the first one reputation yeah yeah that was the great track just different from the from the, from yeah the for rest sure of them. for sure so i found the next three to be super dope advice there was one part in it where like your flow switched to like almost British rap flow, but no British yeah. accent. Yo, I know. I Yo, that, right? this guy, I this guy that, is about right? the details, bro. You know God I mean? damn. Yeah, no, I, and then damn the process was just sick. I was like, man, talk your shit. Talk Yo, your shit, bro. Thanks, bro. Speak it into existence. Thanks, bro. Tell me uh, the difference in like yourself your and the evolution between these two tapes. Okay. So try this at home. Um, I was really like in the mindset. Um, the year prior to that, I had dropped a, like a little a little project um, under my former uh, name, Tiger from the Woods, and it's like um, I was I wasn't satisfied with the project. I was also organizing an event, and that shit went trash. It was like in 2019, and then I took a few months of uh, of break, um, and then you know I started working on some music again. It was like late 2019. I, I made Never Too Broke in late 2019. And then like the whole pandemic happened. And I remember when the pandemic happened, bro, like I was down bad. Like I was I was working. I was doing night school and shit. She was like not doing good for me. And um, then the pandemic goes on. Government is like, yeah, bro, stay home. Don't go outside. Don't go to work. Don't do shit. I was like. Hey yo, talk about window. That's a window. If I seen one, bro, <laughs> like, <laughs> so um, for like two two months, bro, I I was staying home like nine a.m. to nine p.m. I was just doing music all the time. Like my my roommates, bro, like they wanted to fucking beat me up. They're like, bro, your fucking speakers, bro. Like, I was like, yo, uh, I was just making music all day long, and it's it's uh, that's how like the the project um was born, and um, I I just felt like doing something that felt um you know comfortable to listen to you know what i mean and this Le- was try this at home yeah try this at home like it was a bit more like it was it was it was mellow what'd you say you were at the home so i was at home bro at home. yeah bro honestly i was just like bro just 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 listen to this bro chillax bum this shit and see what's up and then um you know i moved out and everything um it was time to like j- just do another project uh for for um my answers are never yours. Um, there's been a lot of like changes ongoing in my life in the last year or so, and uh, I I was going through a like there was a, a lot of shit going on also with my manager, um, and it's like some some personal matters. But like yeah, um, 
I was just very observant of all those shifts and changes and everything. And I, I decided to like make something a bit more mature because it represented like that aspect of growth through everything. And uh, I really wanted to make it more co co coherent because like that's the thing that I felt was missing in Try This At Home, you know? And so um, I made those four songs and the challenge somehow was like way harder because like keeping that same synergy for everything, it's it's harder than it looks. And like I was like, okay, shit, I need to like, you know, tweak things and everything, redo things, have different ver versions of shit. But it, it came out pretty solid and process was my favorite song to make mine too I, i'll tell you how i thought it kind of went yeah is i thought like it like i didn't think it was like a concept album but i kind of drew up this concept for it in my own mind was that <clears throat> like i could kind of tell the difference in like your like your mindsets from both just because i think the tone of the whole project was much different yeah from from uh from try this at home so what i thought kind of was the idea was like the like parlay was this conversation you were starting with mm. yourself. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? That, that you know, you were kind of... Because I found, like I said, very matter-of-fact. Like, you were very confident in this tr in these tracks, I found. Thanks, so man. I found, like, that that conversation was starting to happen with yourself. Yeah. That brought you up to giving yourself this sort of advice. Mm -hmm. uh, advice, yeah, advice, right? Yeah. And then you you really just, like, talking to yourself and giving yourself the, the, ups, the flowers that you des deserve, the big ups, you know, mm -hmm. whatever it needed... To get you to trust the process, right? And there that would go. be process the last track. And then go. that's when it all kind of comes to fruition. Yeah. And what we're going to get next, I can only hope, is going to be like, like this, not to say that your other album was flat. It was just like, it was, it was a very good like placeholder, I think, in your career. But after this, I think like I'm really starting to see the upwards trajectory yeah. of, of your delivery and your career, I think. Yeah, bro. You agree? Nah, nah. Honestly, uh, yo, you resumed it pretty pretty spot on. Like, <laughs> yo, I, I love the fact that, like, bro, you actually look into the details. Mm -hmm. And, yo, like, <laughs> the fact parlay that... parlay in English means talk. Yeah, bro. By the way, guys. <laughs> just, that's what I'm here for. Bro, French the English fact that, like, bro, I, I, hit, I hit this motherfucker up, like, what, Wednesday or something? And, like, you actually pin, pinned it to every details. That that's good, man. Honestly, respect for that. But um, yeah, no, you're 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 right. You're pretty spot on. Um, process was like my favorite song to make, and just because like, bro, it felt so good to just like put all those thoughts on the pen, bro. Because like, I I I went I went into it was a, urgent. Yeah, not nah, like I I went into a lot of like um more um uh, vulnerable aspects of uh of my thoughts and shit, and I was like I like let, let's just like pull it out, you know see what's up and then i wrote i wrote the verses and i was like yo this this felt good to do mm -hmm. and um you know the recording session also was pretty pretty fluid so yeah man i i, I like that song fire um you were talked a little bit earlier about your name change oh yeah bro oh my god <laughs> god damn laughing? uh bro all right so long story short bro tiger is the nickname i got in high school um because you're wicked at golf there you go there you go. I played for like fifteen, no, thirteen years. Are you actually wicked? At yeah, golf? yeah, I Fuck played off. for. Uh, I'm not even playing with you, bro. Bro, I would. I was thinking this today. I was like driving. It's a beautiful day. I was like, man, I would fucking kill like four people to play around a golf right now, dude. Bro, let's do it. I'm down. Let's Fuck do it. Yeah. Let's do it, bro. Dude, yo, let's tap in. Sick. Let's do it. Who's your favorite rapper that golfs? Bro, I haven't seen a lot. I've seen. I know I've seen Drake, like with his line or whatever. Yeah. I saw DJ Khaled, well, rapper ish. Yeah. Schoolboy Q. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's true. I'd also love to play around with Macklemore. Oh my god, bro! I forgot he golfed. Um, yeah, man. Honestly, I don't even know, bro. Or like, I'm gonna say love, Q. I'm gonna say Q. Yeah, I love, I love the celebrity golfers. I shouldn't have said rappers because that's a very small group. But like celebrity, oh, bro. celebrity golfers, like fucking yo. Like Kenny G, the sax players, like a fucking whiz at golf. I dude. know, right? And yo, fucking Play Curry, with JT. Yo, Steph Curry got a fire swing. Yeah, Steph Curry is a solid golf player. Yeah, honestly, I'd love to play with Alfonso Ribeiro, like Carlton from fucking yeah. Fresh Prince of yeah. Bel Air. Yeah, that yeah, would be yeah. So <laughs> sick. Yeah, yeah, no, nah, no, nah, for real, for real. Okay, sorry. So you're wicked at golf. Yeah. So got that nickname in high school. You know, a bunch of school kids are like, "Yo, bro, you like black? you played on your school team and shit." Uh, there was a school program for it. Um, I was just like, I would do school in the morning, golf in the afternoon. Fuck off. I'm not even playing with you. Yeah. Sick, bro. Yeah, bro. It was, it was. I mean, it was what it is. Like, it was cool for what it is, but it's like, yo, it's a bunch of like entitled pricks. 
that I don't fuck with to this day. No, so you I just wish like, you played another sport? Bro, I just, yeah, honestly. Honestly, <laughs> man. I would have done tennis, bro. I would have been a little Roger Federer, bro, like running around, bro. I would have been done with that. Roger from the woods don't sound Yo, so I'm good. Saying, <laughs> my guy. <whatever. laughs> Nah, but bro, I got that name, that name in high school. A uh, bunch of kids who they're like, "Yo, got a funny idea, bro. You're black. You play golf, Tiger. Tiger Woods. Damn, bro, so smart. The shoe fits. <laughs> yo, for real, bro. Like, damn, bro. I thought about it last night, like that. But um, <laughs> yo, um, they gave me that nickname. Um, when I started rapping, it just came naturally. I was like, well, yo, if everybody calls me that, let's just go with Tiger. So it was just Tiger off top, but. Idea was like, bro, you gotta put some twist to it, bro. Everybody's gonna be like, yo, Tiger, who? So, um, I just I had an exclamation point for the eye for like a year or so, bro. That shit was corny as fuck. <laughs> but to be fair, I was like 15, 16 years old. Mm-hmm. So, like, you know what I mean? But um We're growing. Yeah, then I just put it as Tiger. Um, when the Spotify came out and shit, like, you know, when everybody got the sauce, this show kid to upload on streaming platforms, I um I, I kept Tiger. A friend in uh, a friend in CJEP was like, "Yo, when we look up your name on Spotify, there's like 27 different tigers, bro. Like nobody fucking knows about your music, bro. Like you're getting lost in the sauce." So I was like, "I bet. Um, what do you suggest?" I was like, "Bro, put a different name, Tiger from the Woods." And so um, that's what I that's what I I did. Um, I put Tiger from the Woods. Uh, did it for one project. I fucked with that name, my guy. Shit was so corny. It was corny. It was so corny, <laughs> so bro. Corny, like, like, it was like, bro, this sounds like some Disney story fucking name or whatever. Tiger from the woods. I was like, oh, get out of here, bro. Like, <laughs> we need the poo yeah. character. Yo, huh? but for real, but people fuck with it somehow. They're like, yo, bro, it's Tiger from the woods, man. Yo, I was like, get out of here, bro. Get out, get out, get out. And then um, I got my manager, uh, Carlito. Shout out to Carlito. Was supposed to be here actually today, but Montreal is a bit far um yo he was like when he when we started working together and he was like he was really like telling me like bro you need a, you need a whole rebranding bro like because your marketing is trash and he was like fuck your instagram delete all those photos he was like tiger from the woods get out of here with that bullshit it was like change your fucking name bro don't have any name if if like <laughs> it's just he was just like fuck that shit and he was right because I, I had that feeling too and um I, I just decided to like um I, I stumbled upon uh this uh Kendrick interview. Mm-hmm. Um and he was it was basically saying how um he used to be he used to go by K Dot, you know? And he was like, oh, I changed uh to Kendrick Lamar because he was like, um the hardest rap name you can ever have is your own name. Mm-hmm. You know? So it's I that w- Will Smith idea. Yeah. And uh I was just like, that's true. And um, you know, the tiger kind of like stuck like so much through the years like everybody calls me like that so i was like i'm gonna keep that for sure but i'm gonna put my last name because my last name is something that when i was very young for a while i hated because people were making fun of me for so long about it and eventually like i kind of embraced it and now i I fucking love this name Mm -hmm. so i was like i'm gonna fucking put it and if anything it's gonna be a twist it's gonna like you know uh bring bring uh, attention to people just just for the sake of like learning how to pronounce it, you know what I mean? So it's like I right, I'm gonna put Tiger Chikunte, and then uh, even my mom fuck with it. My mom was like, "Oh yeah, you put your name, like, okay, all right, all right," like you know. <laughs> but um, yeah, uh, so that's the that's the whole story, bro. Now I'm with this shit, and uh, it's for life, and we're here. Did you get it tattooed on you somewhere? Is that bro, that's how life it, for life it's gonna bro, be? Bro, my dad's gonna fuck me up if I do that, bro. Like, uh, just get your kunte across your shoulder blade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. What are you doing? Come here, come here. Just, like, <laughs> slaps me in the back, bro. Like fucking idiot. But um, nah, 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 nah. nah. I'm not gonna do that, bro. <laughs> that's hilarious. Um, a rebrand's a hard thing to go go through with, though, eh? Yeah, bro. I mean, just because, especially when you work alone or you you work with uh, certain people. It's kind of like being told that like everything that you thought you were doing right so far is like not a good idea at all, especially if you're the one who came up with it. But at the same time, once you go through it and you look you look back further down the line, it's the best feeling ever. Because now I look back at Tiger from the Woods and I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You know? So, yeah, bro. Evolution, man. It's all yeah. evolution. Yeah, for real, for real. 
copper thing. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for stopping by today, man. Yo, We're thank you guys. We're getting to the very end of our time here. It's been an absolute pleasure to have you in Yo, studio today. I appreciate it, man. Oh, yeah. I appreciate you, man. Where can people find you at, though, before we go? So, uh, Tiger Chakunte, T-C-H-A-K-O-U-N, like November, T-E. Slow that down on the video, on YouTube, or whatever. Um, T C H A K, <laughs> but yeah, um, find me on uh, any streaming platforms: Deezer, Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube, um, SoundCloud, too. Well, ish, but yeah, you can find my music out there. Uh, two main projects: Try This at Home, and My Answers Are Never Yours. That came out this year. No shit. Go check it out. Yes, sir. Thank you for coming by, man. It's been a pleasure. Anytime, bro. Catch you next time. Yes, sir. See y'all next week. Peace.